Oh, is it recording already or what? Uh, I think Julia will, is recording. I'm also recording as well. Oh, okay. So it's nice. Okay, then uh, I'm, also, I'm also doing recording. Make sure that this is because a, a lot of people are asking me for it. So, so this, uh, I'm very glad to, to let you know that uh, we have a pilot uh, online contest last week uh, with um, the great work of Emily, Lewis, and also Doris. So this is so this is the um, so this is the area one contest. We use it as a pilot, and uh, we want to learn from the experience and and then try to learn from the experience and then leverage uh, the experience to everybody. Now for, for today, uh, we're going to spend about uh, about two hours. The first 45 minutes will be sharing uh, of the best practices of online contests by Emily, uh, Lewis, and Doris, okay? And also then uh, we're going to have a five minutes break. Then uh, we'll move on to have a, a Zoom contest um, facilitator training. So I'm sure you know that uh, because it's an online environment, the contest will be run very differently. Now, I've seen a lot of people in this meeting. Um, the target audience for this meeting is actually for the division director, area director, and also the Zoom contest facilitator and the contest chair of the contest. Okay, so if you are a cont uh, contestant, I'm sorry, you know, there won't be any um, information cover on on the on 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 the on, on your on your end okay so firstly i will assume uh because i assume everybody will have already received this uh, let me show this uh, the online contest uh, co co uh, ex uh, contest exception i assume everyone has already read this before coming to this meeting otherwise uh, uh you Please, otherwise, uh, spend your time afterwards. Okay, understand the rule before you uh, uh, be, then make it more wonderful. Okay, so without further ado, I would like to get started with Emily. So Emily is going to is a divisional director, and she is going to share with us the um, contest flow chart. Okay, so Emily, please, I will pass the stage to you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Molly. So hello, everyone. So um, today. We are go uh, since we have the um, honor to help organize the pilot area contest last Saturday. So today we are going to uh, me, my area director Lewis, and also our contest chair Doris. So we are going to share uh, some more information about how we run the contest. And we are so glad that uh, the area contest last Saturday uh, was run smoothly uh, without much particular. Um, uh, issue, so we are glad to share more about our experience for your uh, uh, reference. So right now, let me first share a flow chart about how the contest run. Okay, so usually when we um, talk to the contestants about the contest being run by online on Zoom. And then the first question or uh, the concern from them is that, oh, what will happen when we are having the contest online? And um, to uh, um, alleviate their concerns, so first of all, I want to um, talk about from the contestant's perspective, how an online speech contest run and how is that experience? So basically, their uh, contestants' experience are pretty straightforward uh, for international and Mandarin speech contests. So they will first log into Zoom, and then they will uh, go into the main room, which we serve it as a waiting room. So you can uh, consider the main room is like the room we are right now in Zoom, which is the first room that we enter after logging in Zoom. So at that waiting room, contestants need to update their display name. For example, since um, we need to identify them very easily, so all of them, we need to unify the display name. For example, saying contestant, hibernated, Emily Ho. So this is uh, the uh, display name. And then they can test their mic there while they are waiting to be moved to the designated room, which is uh, the contest room. So next we use one function in Zoom, which is called the breakout room. That function in, in Zoom, which is called the breakout room, we serve it as the contest room. 
So this requires the Zoom host to move the contestants to the contest room. So in the contest room, contestant will have the contestant briefing, they will have further testing if needed, and that's the time that they need to use gallery view or pin the timer to make sure that they can see the timer when they are delivering the speech. And then after everything is uh, in place, then they can start the contestant speech and make sure that everyone mutes the sound and video except the one who is performing. Because we found that if everyone in the room opens their video, that is very distracting to the contestants. So this is our suggestion, that is to mute everyone's sound and video in the con contest room, except the one who is speaking. And then there, we will have the result announcement as well. So this is pretty straightforward. And then next is the evaluation speech contest. So what, change, what changes are there in the evaluation speech contest is that after the contestant are uh, being moved to the contest room, so there they will hear the test speaker speech together. And then after that, the contestants will be moved to another breakout room. Breakout room is a function in Zoom. And we serve it as the preparation and waiting room. So inside breakout room two, the preparation room, the contestants will have the five minutes preparation. So they will um, focus on preparing the evaluation speech and the contestants need to turn on the video because the SAA need to monitor the contestants. And then when the time is up, Zoom hosts will broadcast a message and then move the contestant to contest room one by one according to the order. So the next contestant will be moved during one minute of silence. And then during the waiting time, it's very important that the SAA needs to do monitoring. And the SAA will need to ask all contestants to fold the preparation sheet. So for example, get paper. So they need to show in front of the SAA, fold the sheet like this and then put it aside. And then they need to maybe move backward a bit and then need to show that their hands are not doing other things and then wait until their turn comes. So in this part, SAA needs to do monitoring and make sure that um, yeah, the, candidate, uh, the contestants won't be uh, watching their phone or using any electronic devices. And as said, when contestants are being moved to move back to the contest room, then contestants deliver the contestant speech. And once again, uh, contestants need to use the gallery view or they can pin the timer to make sure that they can see the timer card. And also everyone mute sound and video except the one who is performing until reach some announcement. So that's how the way uh, evaluation speech works. That's use of the breakout room. And then next is the table topics contest. And it's pretty similar to the evaluation contest in the way that after delivering the contest rules in the contest, in the contest room, then first con contestant stays in the contest room and then remaining contestants will be moved to the breakout room too, which serves as a waiting room. So similarly, all the contestants need to move back a bit, show that their hands are not doing other things. They can put it, uh, last time I saw some of them do it like this, or they can do it like this or anything. So they need to put their hands up and uh, make sure that they are not looking at something else. And the same, when the time is up during one minute of silence, the Zoom host broadcasts a message and then move the next contestant to the contest room. And then in the contest room, so contestants deliver the table topic speech. Uh, before they deliver, make sure they use gallery view or pin the timer. Everyone mute sound and video except the one who is performing and then result announcement. So that's the way how contestants will experience. And then next is for judges. Since contest chair 
and ADs and DVDs, uh, we all need to brief the judges uh, as well, especially we need the chief judge to know how to take care of our judges. So for judges, it's not too complicated. So for judges, first of all, for the judges briefing, uh, last Saturday, we, um, lock, we opened another Zoom room for judges to do the briefing because at the same time, contestants are doing briefing in the contest room as well. So to avoid having them um, clash into one another and know that who are the judges, so we open another Zoom room for them to do the briefing. So in that briefing, uh, apart from the usual briefing that we do, so chief judge also need to make sure that the judges rename themselves, make sure that they know how to rename themselves into, uh, for example, how we used last Saturday is J1, J2, J3, J4, and then um, they, the chief judge know who represents, uh, which number represents which person. And then they must hide their face or profile picture, if any. Then after the uh, judges briefing, then at the same time, we need to check whether the contestants have finished their briefing or not. If okay, then we can make sure that all the contestants are moving, moved to the contest room. Then the judges can be moved to the contest room. And once again, in the main room, we do a double checking, make sure that the display name and pictures are being hided already before they're moved to the contest room as well. So when everyone is in the contest room, then the contest can start. And then one point is that during submission of ballots, we, uh, last Saturday, we opened one more room for the judges using the breakout room function. So there they can submit their ballots or if they have any issue when they are filling the ballots, they can say something within that judges room. Because uh, if they are being uh, stay in, uh, still in the contest room, then perhaps when they are uh, saying something, they may be afraid that the contestants may know. So we open a separate breakout room for them in case they need to communicate with each other. And then when they, after they have submitted their ballots, they are being moved back to the contest room then can announce the results altogether. So that's uh, how the judges experience. So it's um, pretty straightforward, hopefully. So if you are okay with these two perspectives, then now I'll go into the more detailed version, which is uh, the whole process for Zoom hosts and for everyone who needs to know about what's, how everything works. So this is a more complicated version. And actually, it's a similar thing from the previous slides, but then we put it together because Zoom host will, uh, and co-host needs to uh, manage everything simultaneously. So we need a bigger picture to make sure that everything is in the right place. So in international and Mandarin speech contests, as mentioned, we have two Zoom IDs, two Zoom rooms. So one is for contest, and the other one, I uh, name it as number two, is for the judges briefing. So after the judges have finished the judges briefing, they will go back to the Zoom meeting ID one as well, the one for contest. So there in the main room, the, uh, which we serve it as a waiting room, just to remind, so uh, everyone needs to show their face. They need to update the display name. Uh, just now, we haven't mentioned about the facilitators. So same for the facilitators. Facilitators need to update their display name. For example, if your role is SAA, so we need to say SAA hyphenated Emily Ho. And uh, maybe timer, so we say timer hyphenated Emily Ho. So it's very clear that who um, was everyone's role in the Zoom room. Because this is very important so that Zoom hosts know which um, person, which people needs to be moved to the breakout rooms. So Zoom host will be very important to help check the identity of the um, Toastmaster who are in the room and then move to a designated room for them. At the same time, there's an SAA in this room to help welcome the contestants, help them uh, test the mic while waiting. And this role is very important, especially for the um, 
contest in the number two, three, four contest because some contestants may be late or some contestants may sign in on a, in a perhaps a, a, an inaccurate time, then when they're in the waiting room, then that is a can take care of them. And let me see. Ah, just now I, met, I forgot to mention a very important point is that for the Zoom meeting, we, after considering many factors, we um, have set a password for the Zoom meeting, and then we do not allow any audience in the, in the Zoom contest. And what are the considerations? Uh, one point is that we want to reduce the risk of having anyone in the contest room, maybe unmuting themselves by mistake or making different um, interventions which uh, affects the contest contestants. And then secondly, as you see that uh, Zoom host needs to move people around to different rooms. So if there are too many people in the room, maybe this will uh, make the Zoom host um, take much more time to manage it, especially if um, a Zoom host is not is uh, having the first few times to run it, then maybe um, the fewer people, the better. But of course, um, perhaps if the Zoom host is okay to manage more people, then uh, yeah, I think this leave it to your own consideration. And then after the contestants are being moved to the contest room, so just now we mentioned about contestant briefing and testing, uh, make sure, help them make sure that they uh, use the gallery field or pin the timer. And then during the contest, so everyone deliver the speech, timer show, timer cut using the virtual background. So later, I think in the facilitator session later on, um, we can demonstrate how to use the virtual background to show the three colors. And then, yeah, everyone mutes sound and video. And then after contest, as mentioned earlier, so our ballot counters need to collect our ballots. And how's the way of collecting ballots? Uh, we suggest that there are two types of ways. One method, we can use an offline method, for example, use WhatsApp to uh, pass the ballot sheet to the ballot counters. Or another way is inside Zoom, uh, they can use a private message in the chat box to send the ballot sheet to the ballot counters. So I think this, uh, this can leave it to the chief judge to, to coordinate with the ballot counters and see. And then, yeah, timers also need to pass the time record sheet to chief judge and judges pass the ballot sheet to ballot counters and ballot counters calculate and then pass the sheets to chief judge and then chief judge cross check and pass result to contest chair. Then contest chair can announce the results in the contest room. So um, for international and Mandarin speech contest, is so far okay? Any question in terms of the flow from anyone? We have five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, you, oh, there's a Lily. Lily, is that you have a question? Yes, you can ask. Can you unmute yourself? Hi, Lily. Oh, that's uh, audience are not allowed in the room. Yes, uh, that's how we did it on last Saturday. So I think. Uh, just now I mentioned about what kind of audience? Well, I'm not sure what kind of audience you're referring from, but basically last Saturday, only the ones who are needed are in the contest room. For example, only the contestant, the judges, the facilitators. So without any audience, everyone in the room has a role. Yes, okay. But of course, I heard that maybe some other areas who are very familiar with running online contests, then maybe they also uh, allow audience as well. So 
I think this may be up to the Zoom host and the contest chair of the contest. Okay, if there's no other question, let's go to the... So, yeah, from Kerry, yeah, Aaron has answered for me. Yeah. So, um, if you ask about the audience, so for the International and Mandarin Speech Contest, the contestants can stay in the room and listen to other contestants' speech, so they can stay in the room when they are delivering the speech. Okay, so right now, let me go to the next part, which is the Eversion Speech Contest. So, if you have already get the idea from the previous slide that I talked about for, uh, from contestant's perspective. So here is the overall flow about every aspect. So at, at the beginning is uh, similar. And then during contest, so everyone is in the contest room. After the test speech, then the contestants and SAA will be moved to breakout room two, which is served as the preparation room and their contestants need to turn on the video. And then contest room, so they will wait there. So for example, they can interview the test speaker, for example. So after the five minutes preparation, then the first contestant will be moved to, move back to contest room. And then the other contestants stay in the preparation room. And as mentioned just now, Remaining contestants needs to fold the preparation sheet and then move back a bit, show that their hand, show their hands and head without doing other things. And SAA do monitoring. And after contest, the process is the same as in international speech. So for evasion speech contest, is it okay? Then we let me go to the last part, which is the table topics uh, contest. So here, uh, during contest, so after the uh, everyone in the contest room, after mentioning about the contest rules, then first contestants stay in contest room, and other contestants are moved to the waiting room. And then when it's their turn, so during one minute of silence. Zoom host broadcast a message and then move the contestant to contest room. And then after contest, yeah, it's the same for collecting the ballots. Okay, so that's all for the overview. And um, basically, I guess it's uh, pretty straightforward. It's just that there may be different issues may come up. For example, um, last Saturday, we have contestants accidentally log out. Um, throughout the process, then we need to find out where the con contestant is. For example, um, the contestants may um, maybe originally supposed to move to breakout room two, then maybe um, he uh, press the wrong button and then go back to main room. So we need to look for the contestant. And also contestant may accidentally log out the whole Zoom room. Then we need to ask the person to log in again and then try to help that person move back to the correct room. So that's what the host and co-host need to work at the back end. So that's why uh, apart from the Zoom environment, we suggest some offline communication. For example, there's WhatsApp group so that judges, if they have any issues that need to announce during the contest, they can still use offline message. And also the Zoom host, co-host, and also the contest chair is to have very close um, contact throughout the whole, whole process to make sure that everyone is in the right room. Uh, last time we also have a can, uh, contestant log on at a different time, which is not supposed to be joining that contest yet, which should be at the next section. But then uh, that person log on at a different time and then we move them uh, to the diff uh, uh, um, an inaccurate room. So for, in such cases, we will need to cross-check each person uh, whether they're in the right room at different times. So that's the 
minor uh, details which we need to work on. So, any questions? Hello, Emily. Yes. yes. This is Michael. Michael, yes. There's a question. Yeah. Did you have any issues with the timer? Uh, do you suggest uh, contestants time themselves? Sometimes uh, using the virtual background, there's a lag on the timing. Timing. Uh, uh, you mean any issues with the timer? Uh, for timer, basically not. Uh, not much big issue. Just that um, there's really contestant may not be uh, forgets to use gallery view, then may uh, lost where the timer is. So we suggest every time before the contestant starts the speech, we ask once again, uh, contestant, can you see the timer? And then if the contestant said yes, then we can go forward. We can proceed. So okay. they can use different methods to find the timer. If they use gallery view, then uh, because we have mute everyone's video so timers video is supposed to be on the very top or they can use the pin function to pin the timer then they can see the timer but uh, yeah different people may have different um, preference but yeah we will um, mention that during the briefing and then we ask them once more before they start the speech Okay, all right. Uh, thank you, Emily. We have more content coming up. Uh, yes. When it comes to the contest, how is it organized? And I think Doris, as a contest chair, will be able to share a bit more on this. So, so should we move on to, sure. to, to Lewis and, and Doris? Yeah, Lewis. Yeah. Thank you, Emily. Thanks a lot. Mm, you're welcome. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Emily. Thank you, Molly. All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, so what I suggest, uh, the next step is Doris will highlight the uh, breathing uh, part of it. And then I will try to update regarding on the overall feedback, what we learned, and some of the key points I would like to uh, facilitate to pay more attention. So I'm not sure if Doris online now. Yes, I'm here. Okay, yes. okay. Doris, 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 like Doris is the contest chair of, uh, of the Area Owen contest, and uh, Lewis is the Area Owen director. So. Time is now yours. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Louis and Molly. So for the briefing part, maybe I could share the, we actually prepared a, con, uh, a reminder notes for the contestant. So maybe I can share the contestant reminder notes for your information first. Here, this one. So we have sent them a reminder notes for all contestants before the uh, area contest last Saturday. So first thing that we remind them is regarding the submission of the speaker's certification of eligibilities. Uh, we set the deadline like 24 hours before the contest because uh, we, it takes time for us to prepare some, to collect all the forms as well as to prepare some slides to show the name and the speech titles for the contestant, especially for the uh, international speech and Mandarin speech. So, uh, well, actually at the end, we allow some buffer here. So everyone has submitted the form before March, uh, on, uh, on March 6th, like in the evening. So uh, yes, it recommend to recommend to ask all the contestants to submit them in advance. The second point is we have uh, allowed them to test their, the contestant to test the Zoom, uh, test, test their mic and test their, uh, test their mic, test their video setting during uh, one hour before the actual contest because we start the contest at two. So they are allowed to come and join to test it has the setting at about one. Uh, during the during uh, that period of testing time, we also have to draw. We also draw the orders for the contestant. Uh, we actually use an online tool. It's an online like online lucky draw view to uh, pick the order of the contestant. 
yes I and then we and then we go on to have a contestant bidding for all contestants. So that's why we ask all the contestants to all contestants, no matter which contest he or she was in. And I ask all, we ask all of them to join the briefing at 1.30 and we can give them a overall briefing of uh, the rules and especially for the, especially for the special rules for Zoom meeting. Then we have remind them for their registration time because uh, for this, they can only, because only contestants and the facilitators are allowed to join that part of contest. So if some of them may be participating in a later part of the contest. Then they may leave at around two and be joined during that part of the con uh, contest. We also share with them a uh, video re recording, which for their Zoom training, which we had earlier. The, then the fifth part is uh, we remind them to check if their voice is clearly uh, clearly can be hear by the others. Maybe they can test uh, using like using a headphone or with using a Bluetooth headphone or like if without you or even without using a head headphone, so they can test it uh, during the uh, before the contest starts. And we encourage them to use the laptop instead of a uh, smartphone device because as uh, Emily has mentioned, we should advise them to use the gallery mode so that they can see the, make sure that they can see the Thomas, uh, Thomas uh, the screen or timer on the top left hand, top corner, top left hand corner. And it's definitely their own choice to use, whether use, uh, they can use, definitely their choice to use a laptop or even tablet or maybe mobile as well. Uh, but this is, but so, yes, there's also some contestant in last, on last Saturday, they used smartphone. Uh, so far that they, they, they are still, they are still okay to see the timer's uh, color. But yes, this, so it will be even better if, uh, the contestant can use a laptop. And it ha may happen that they have dropped off the line during the contest or be when they are in the waiting room. And then we recommend them to contact our area uh, director because Lewis at that time was, a, was also a host of the meeting. So he had to like contact with the Zoom master to bring back the uh, contestant back to the right room. And the last point we remind them is not to press the leave button on the breakout room uh, because it, it may, they may accidentally left the contest room or accidentally left the contest room during their uh, competition. So this is the general rule that we have reminded the contestants. And we have repeated some of the key points during the contest briefing, like uh, in the general briefing, as well as before the, uh, for each part of the contest, for example, diversion contest or even table topic, every session we remind some key points uh, in addition to the traditional rules, like the timing rules, the, uh, like the protest rules, things like those. And one special point that uh, we have added during the like the table topic contest is to remind the contestant because they had to leave the room uh, when it's not their turn then come back during the one minute of silence so when they come back at the one minute of silence we'll remind them to uh, test if they can see the timer slide and we will have the acknowledgement that they have they can see the timer slides before we ask them to start so I guess that's it for the uh, like the briefing part. So any question you'd like to raise?
if now that maybe I pass that the time to Louis. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, Doris. All right, let me share my screen as well. Okay, all right. So, um, in fact, a lot of key points has been highlighted by uh, Doris as well as by Emily earlier. I just want to mention some of the uh, stress on some of the um, major uh, area that we might need to pay more attention. Uh, or some of the feedback really uh, they like very much. I think we just need slight modification to make it even better. Uh, because some of the first one, I think the training uh, on the YouTube uh, was very helpful on uh, the video uh, that they come back to reveal. Uh, some of the suggestion might be even better if we guide them through some of the major steps or more specific instruction uh, in different uh, sections of the online contest. I think Aaron did a very good job afterward and made some uh, um, short video clip and they can learn different specific function uh, if they want to reveal. And also we try to chop off what they want to reveal on just contest on a uh, different part of the contest like for duration or this is for different topics. So they can go straight to learn something more specifically while they go through the whole video. Uh, that's one thing. And the other point we'd like to highlight is um, really uh, we mentioned a few times but because their first time is online uh, joining online contests and not just that and some of them are first time as contestant uh, so they don't have much of experience they can be also nervous so they really don't pay enough attention to what we might have said early in the briefing or the reminder note so that's why we have to stretch again and again make sure they know how to pin or how to use the gallery mode so they can see the timer uh, clearly. Uh, so what we learn also to modify it, uh, during the middle of the meeting, we have to specific ask the question before each speaker. Make sure they acknowledge, they see clearly where's the timer. Even though I ask a few times, but sometimes they still miss it. So I think that's important because uh, there were some uh, protests later on, they said they were not clear where the timer. So I think this is important to stretch again and again on this point. And then the other one we'd like to highlight is, uh, uh, I think I mentioned already on the F point by uh, Emily, so I will skip this one. But during the contest, uh, as what Emily mentioned, sometimes some of the contestants really uh, hit the wrong button, even though we remind them in the breathing and the reminder look like do not touch, leave the meeting room. But somehow they also touch it by mistake or they don't know where they went into when they come back uh, because of technical issue. They went to the wrong room and they touch the wrong key afterward. So that's, I think the SAA, if they're in the waiting room, they can also give them some guidance. And also we might have to make sure, uh, even during the Zoom training, we keep that to remind them uh, on this specific function. And then number two was uh, we also need to, uh, again, uh, the MC will remind them, ask the specific question to get key acknowledgement on where the timer is located. I think that's was stretched a few times already. But that's just really, we learned a uh, lot of mistakes and people still uh, didn't pay enough attention on it. Okay, and the other ones are number four point. Um, so they, it's actually quite difficult for the, judge, the chief judge and also for um, the contest chair uh, with a lot of WhatsApp message coming in and out. Uh, there's a lot of contact, make sure they, they get enough information. So that's really up to the uh, chief judge, how they communicate with the facilitator. And this one uh, also, there's some form easier to save time regarding the uh, uh, calculation of the uh, score. Um, so I think Wilson, Wilson Yao has uh, prepared some of the great example with an uh, alternative solution afterward, so they can save some time, how they can calculate, how they uh, communicate better with the software tools. Um, I think later on Wilson may be able to put it on the video for sharing as well. Um, the other one on number six, I would like to also mention um, some of the M's, I think like Doris was the MC as well, 
he, she get very good signal until towards the end of the last 15 minutes of the table topic section uh, uh, contest. So she was cut off with a very weak signal. So I think there's something we need to pay attention. We also need to consider a backup MC, what happened if they lost the signal. So that's a uh, need to pay attention. And then number eight, also uh, some of the feedback during the waiting, we asked the, at the end of it, asked the contestant some of the uh, uh, comment. I think they also feel like they don't feel the traditional way seeing a good feedback from audience and getting a lot of participation, engagement with the audience. So the, the, the one thing we think we can do is at least we give them some audio sound with the clapping. At least the uh, chief judge and MC may need the clapping on the mic because most of the audience are already built the video and audio. So in fact, the contestant sometimes can be confused even though it's their turn to start. They are not too sure especially for duration or table topic. Once they move into the uh, contest room, they're still not sure. Uh, are they ready to start or should they wait because they're still during the middle of the one minute silence. So we can uh, put the sign, one minute silence on the background at the same time when they move into the contest room. And also the chief judge MC can start clapping a hand. Um, so that will also give them kind of signal they can start. Also at the end, uh, without too much of dead air, so they can start also putting the uh, capping hand and create atmosphere, almost like uh, of the traditional uh, contest. So they feel better echo and feedback as a contest. And the number nine point, um, just mentioned earlier, so one minute of silence is designed will help them to, to know what they are doing during the waiting in the waiting room. Uh, so they know this is already in a the moment they're ready for uh, going to uh, start. So that will help them to feel more comfortable and what's the next in their prediction. I think this is all the key point what we learned from the individual contestant feedback and from the helpers on the facilitators after the contest. Okay, any questions so far? I think this is all what I would like to highlight during the contest last Saturday as what we observed and collect. So let's open the floor for questions. So if you have a question for Emily, Lewis, or Doris, now feel free to, to raise it. So do two things. You can either send your question through the chat, or you may unmute yourself and raise the question. Okay. Molly, so can I say something? Yes. Say something, yes. First of all, thank you for organizing this uh, very useful training for everyone here. And thanks, uh, Emily, Louis, uh, North Clover, Doris, for the sharing. Now, uh, I'm, I was not in the uh, pilot contest, but then because Jim Wang, our parliamentarian, was there, so he asked me to relate some of the observations. So perhaps I just mentioned his observation for everybody's reference. Uh, Basically, he said it would be important we all follow the contest rule book. Despite this is a Zoom meeting, we make sure that we understand fully what the rule book says and follow the contest rule book, first of all. Particularly in introducing the contestants and in choosing the table topic questions. So I guess there's something that I have no idea what happened, but this is what Jim said here. So just to raise this, if there is any relevant. By all means, uh, bear this in mind. And one more point, he said the chief judge would be to stick to the chief judge duties and not talk so much. <laughs> well, I mean, perhaps uh, in the usual contest, the chief judge basically would be kind of uh, keeping silence all the way through until the very end. So he's saying that perhaps it's too so for the chief judge to do the same. And the chief judge may use we ask the contest chair or the Zoom master to help, just in case, uh, for the control of the running of the uh, Zoom contest. So this is his point. And other than that, I am very happy that uh, tonight we have very enthusiastic members, AD, DVD, and so on and so forth attending this, uh, this training. 
And I understand this will be recorded, means that uh, those who are not able to make to the meeting tonight will, will still be able to have an opportunity to review it in order that we'll be running very smooth area and division contests online later. And then one more point, I guess uh, I would like to say that from now on, since we're moving into the area and division contest soon, uh, we must pay attention in particular that for individual division area or even for the district, we may not be uh, helping individual contestants for their workshop, introducing their workshop and so on and so forth because that might give them extra exposure. So I guess this is on a fairness basis and it would be good that we uh, pay attention in this regard. Thank you. Thank you, Molly. Thank you, everybody. Okay. All right. So any other questions? I have a question. Um, they mentioned that uh, there is, uh, when the judges tally up all their marks, there is a uh, a type of form in which they um, put their marks. Is this a Google form? Do you make that form from Google? Can, can I try to answer? Oh, Emily, go ahead, Emily. Oh, no problem. I just share what we did last Saturday. On uh, last Saturday, we just followed the traditional way, which is the written ballot form. So judges just uh, fill in the form as usual, sign their name, and then take a picture of the form and then pass to the chief uh, ballot counters. But then uh, just now, Lewis mentioned that uh, there is a suggestion that to speed up this, um, the pace for calculation, perhaps an online form, online Google form can be made so that it's faster when they do the calculation. So this is a suggestion. Uh, just, just one uh, quick thing also. In fact, uh, we prepare both for the chief judge and the uh, ballot counter, but I think it depends on the uh, helpers. <laughs> well, it depends on the facilitator, whether they, which way they like. Uh, in fact, we provide them both, but sometimes uh, it's really up to the individual. So really, if they, you prefer to use the, uh, let's say the content shape prefer to use the software solution with the uh, Google uh, form, I think the SAA and the chief judge need to agree beforehand. I think that's also important. Then uh, a further question. Uh, would you happen to have a sample of this Google form that you can flash on the screen, show us what it looks like? How do you set it out? Yes, we have example. Uh, uh, actually, Molly uh, got it from uh, the other helpers uh, to share with us. And also, uh, Wilson Yao prepared even another uh, alternative solution, looks even better. So, uh, certainly, we can share with those. Mm -hmm. And it's up to you which one works better for your contest. Yes, later we can share uh, with the screen and then show you uh, the form. Okay, Macy has a question, right? Yes. Um, hi, thanks everyone for the meeting. Uh, this is Mercy from K4. Uh, I actually received a question from one of the contestants is because of the online contest, obviously the stage movement um, and the body language will be limited to a certain extent. So the question is whether there will be adjustment to the judging criteria by the judges based on body movement or stage movement. Thank you. Well, I think that, uh, Macy, that really comes down to, to, to the judging criteria. So yes, uh, we have very clear um, guidelines, as, as you know, that uh, this, uh, this is how, what goes into the score and what are the marks will be allocated. So body movement will definitely be one of them. Okay, so according to the Toastmaster online speech regulation, we are, ex expecting or not expecting we are uh, suggesting people that they show the, their upper body so it is up to the contestant to 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 decide where how her or his her speech will fit uh, into 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 the screen 
or into the monitor or, in, or, or into the uh, com uh, in, into the camera right so there is unfortunately there's no adjustment on, on that and then body movement is still one of the judging criteria um, thanks Molly and then can I go back to the contestant and say yeah we'll go by the normal judging criteria but then I think they would like to know whether the chief judge would actually advise the judge to you know when they assess that aspect they will also take into some considerations so is there any guidance for the chief judge to brief the judge accordingly and also for the contest chair to brief the, the contestants because mm. of that limitation mm. the contest uh, the the chief judge will uh, definitely will 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 debrief uh, the judge but uh, the chief judge uh, would not debrief anything on the judging forms because uh, we all live with the judging form and 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 then, then the judge will uh, um, score it accordingly. Okay, I understand. So basically the answer to the contestant will be, we'll still go by the judging criteria and then they are encouraged to follow that to their best ability. Is yes, that correct? Absolutely. Okay. absolutely. Great. Great, thank you. Uh, thank just, you. One quick, just one quick thing to uh, come in as well. In fact, uh, during the briefing as well as the, uh, the testing, uh, the chief judge also come in and the contest chair also help to come in individual contestant when they test it, make sure they can see the upper body uh, on the screen. Uh, of course, some of those even do more extra, you yeah, have enough room to move back a bit from the camera so they can even see the full body. Uh, but at least in general, we give everyone test and feedback to see the upper half of the body. So the chief judge uh, makes sure that it's really compliant to our standards. Great. Thank you very much. Okay, any further questions? Okay, let me do a countdown as well. So, okay, five. Hello. Sorry. Great. I, yes. I was uh, asking Talis a question on the chat. I, I Just now, I didn't catch the last point of uh, his sharing from Jim. I, I think he said something about we will not have any workshop for the contestants or can I um, have some clarification on that? Yes, Ben, sorry, I didn't, uh, I didn't check the chat, uh, chat box now. Yeah, what I'm saying is because uh, we, the fairness for contest is very important. Say for example, if the division is hosting some workshop conducted by a particular in a particular contestant that might not that, that might give that person an extra exposure compared with other contestants so from now on it may be that we must be mindful of not of the division the area uh, coming up to promote the uh, the workshop for i mean the individual can conduct their own workshop but that division the area would best not to help promote those workshops because they, this would be very much uh, encouraging or helping the exposure of that particular contestant. This is just what I'm trying to say. Am I, does that make myself clear on that? Yeah, 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 sorry. I, I was paying attention to some other stuff, so I didn't catch it fully. That's <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah, but that, that's always good that if I can reinforce this point again, because now we are going into the, the next, uh, phase of the area and division contest so we must be very careful that's it thanks okay mm -hmm. thank you ben um Alex, this is Alex. okay so any further question alex you have a question alex low uh yes uh, on on top of uh, what the what the ben's question is so if we have the breathing section for the contestant before the contest is appropriate Sorry, Alex, your voice doesn't come really uh, clear to us. So do you mind come closer to the microphone and speak again? For us to host a pre-contest day breathing for the contestant, um, is a breathing, not a workshop. Is it appropriate to do that? Uh, Molly, can I help on this? Uh, because all I'm saying just now is that uh, I understand uh, now and then 
that some we we do have very very good speakers in our in our district, of course, and they might be doing workshops. And uh, I'm saying we're not the division or the area or even district will not be promoting or help promoting a particular a particular contestant's workshop. If that workshop is going to be done by a contestant. I would suggest that we be mindful not to help promoting any of these workshops because they're contestants. It might give them an, an impression that uh, you know he might have extra exposure. This is my point. If what you're talking about would be the briefing given to uh, contestants generally, then I guess this is something that should be um, uh, appropriate. That's that's my uh, understanding. Or Molly, you you have any any uh, any uh, anything that to um, supplement what I've just said, or correct me if I'm wrong. Mm, okay, so if uh, it is a debriefing for, for the contestant, I'm sure you heard from uh, Lewis and also heard from Doris and also from Emily that a debriefing is actually needed. If you look at the rules, uh, online speech con uh, exceptional, uh, exception rules, uh, clearly in rule number five, uh, that uh, we are actually asked to do a, a briefing to the contestant, okay? So be mindful about that. Briefing is definitely needed. It's not workshop, okay? Thank you. Okay, any further questions? So this uh, ban on contestants doing workshops, uh, after the contest, then the contestant can give a, uh, a workshop. Right. Okay. Um, Mary, I think it's not a ban. <laughs> it is that saying that uh, uh, if a contestant is doing a workshop, uh, he or she can always do it. But uh, as a district, we are not going to promote uh, this workshop just to give it. Will, otherwise, it would give, give an unfair advantage to the the to, to the contestant. Okay. All right. Then one mm -hmm. other question. So, say the person is from another district, they can come and and they are going to be a contestant in the other district. They can come and give a workshop in our district. Oh yes, uh, this, this is up to them. Yeah, yeah. we want to make it sure, fair to the district 89. Mm. Okay, all right, thanks. Okay, I think we have to move on, otherwise I will be here for a whole night. Um, so how about this, let's take a five minutes break. Uh, if you look at the clock, my clock now is a 20, half past, uh, 10. So let's come back at uh, five, uh, five minutes, or 20, so 35 minutes past, and then uh, we are going to have the Zoom contest facilitator training. Okay, so take a five minutes, but come back. All right, thanks.
All right, guys. Uh, so let's continue. Okay. So in this second half of the section, um, we are going to do a Zoom contest facilitator training. So it's a bit more technology that we are focusing on. And uh, we will have Aaron, Aaron Learn, to uh, run through this uh, with us. So Aaron has been uh, a Zoom master for many, many times, many, many years. And uh, he is actually helping us with the Area 01 contest on that day. So Aaron, the time is yours. See if you can finish it in 45 minutes. Then we will have the remaining 50 minutes for questions. How about this? Okay, thank you for that. Thanks. Hi, can you hear? Aaron, sorry, cannot hear you. Hear me now. Okay, I have to remove my ear, earphone. I don't know what happened though, but yeah. Sorry, that takes around like uh, one minute or two. So, for this Zoom contest facilitator training, I will be focusing mainly on the technical bits and also related to how you can actually train your own contest facilitators to become a Zoom master, a better counter, etc. So this actually includes everything that is covered in the contest. And it will be recapping and reviewing what Emily earlier on have said, uh, just letting people feel the flow along with side. So today's focus will be three things. One will be the contest overview. Two is the contest facilities and responsibilities, obviously different functions, step-by-step -step guidance. And three will be more on the troubleshootings. What are the common issues that we as a contest chair or contest facilitators will have to face in an online contest? So in the uh, District 89 itself, there are four different contests, international, Mandarin, table topics, and evaluations. And when we actually look at these differences, I'm going to divide them into three different portions. The first one will be classified as international Mandarin. What's the difference between this and the other contest is that all the attendees will be in the breakout room. So there will be no one left behind. So you do not need to worry about who is actually in another breakout room or something like that. Everyone will be in a room called contest room. The second main point is that you just need to have three rooms for this contest. The main room, which is the, the one that you actually enter the first time that you enter into this room, there is a contestant waiting room. Contestant waiting room is usually what we call as a contest briefing room, whereby contest chair will brief the rules, etc. We also have the judges room, whereby the judges will be allocated to them by the Zoom master at the end, uh, after the contest, and after which they'll be doing the ballot countings, etc. And finally, the contest room, where the main contest is held. And during the contest itself, there'll be the timer, the contest MC, and the chief judge will switch on the webcam. So because these three individuals will be kind of important too. Obviously, the one that's not listed here will be the contestant themselves. They actually will also switch on the webcam with you. So at most, at every time for any contest itself, there'll be four people switching on the webcam so that you will be able to see their reactions so that you don't need to worry too much about it, but we will make sure that the timer is within reach that you'll be able to see. If you do not, if you are not able to see them, at least let us know and we'll make sure to fix that problem directly. For the evaluation is slightly different because the evaluation contestant will actually be in the room at the start and they will actually move to a different room. Uh, after for the five minutes preparation, after which they will be moved one at a time by the Zoom master. Later on, I'll brief more on the Zoom master technical functions. Uh, alongside, uh, only the timer contest MC will switch on the webcam this time because we do not want to have extra disturbance because chief judge might not be much more of a slight importance to show their face in the contest. We want to focus more on the evaluation, really seeing the time. Now the table topics is slightly different because the table topics, the first contestant will be in the room and everyone else, the Zoom master will be shifting them to the 
to the contestant waiting room, whereby there will be SAA waiting there. Obviously, it's the same as evaluation. The SAA will be looking at you at the webcam to make sure that you are not kind of cheating or at least talking to someone else. Your hands are at least one feet away from your webcam so that your hands are able to are visible for everyone to see and you're not touching any electronic devices to, to maintain the Toastmaster integrity. Now, now, we focus more now on the technical bits of contest facilitators and responsibilities. Now, Zoom Master is the core important person. If you do not have the Zoom Master, it kind of ruined the whole contest themselves because the Zoom Master actually has lots of duties and I'm going to break it down later on in step by step. So main responsibility is to set up a breakout room. Uh, it's not as easy as it sounds. There are quite a lot of different functionalities beforehand to prep for this stage. The second one is assigning participants. I will show you how hard it can be later on. But then if you have less people, like as I mentioned before, the audience will not be there. The audience will not be there, meaning that there'll be only like around 20 to 30 people and that's within manageable state. If you have like lots of like 100 audience all gathered in that contest room, that is one issue. If all of them are switching on the webcam, it's going to lag out everyone. In terms of network bandwidth, etc., you will actually kind of make the contestant disconnected. So this is one precaution that uh, many contestants or many contest share may overlook. So that's why we have to reduce the number, not just because of the integrity issues, but also re reducing the possibilities of them disconnecting from the contest itself. We also have the troubleshoot of technical issues, uh, which include the renaming. Some people might not be able to rename their names. So we have to help them somehow or some way. And that's a contest progress chat for Zoom Master to do. And also doing the mute button to mute all, to, look, to focus on the main contestant doing the speech and closing the videos of everyone except the timer and the MC so that the contestant can see them very clearly. Now, Zoom Master's prep work beforehand. So first of all, they have to log in, obviously go into the Zoom uh, main page and log in and creating an account. Obviously, we have a district account or division account that may actually support because that is on the credits of the district trails of District A9. Uh, each division should have a district uh, div uh, division Zoom account. Or if not, you can actually relate to the district account for this contest itself. Now, the next stage is that you have to do something called the settings for anyone who's creating the breakout room. Creating the settings will be essential for Zoom Master. And then make sure that you allow the breakout room. Otherwise, this breakout room function will not be available. Obviously, it's not available for Zoom free version. It's available for Zoom Pro version. So meaning that the account has to be paid to create this function. And make sure that you also see that it's also opening for the co-host so that you will not be exhausted. A Zoom master as a Zoom host, you can allocate and delegate some duties for other people to be co-hosts. Just like right now in this room, exactly, we have quite a few co-hosts that would support in different ways, such as maybe muting some people or renaming someone or maybe even doing some simplicity stuff of even chatting and uh, preventing any issues from happening. So the co-host actually has a power of doing so, like spotlighting, et cetera, the additional functions, which is taught in the previous district training already. Now for step four, you have to schedule a new meeting after you make the settings. Uh, the settings are important before you even do this step. So you schedule a, schedule a meeting or schedule a meeting room for your contest. And after which, remember all the star signs are all the important buttons for you to do for the Zoom master only, okay? You do not need to worry if you're other participants. This is for the Zoom master. So they have to set up the contest room by ticking the box of the ones that has stars. Like for example, meeting ID, you do it generate automatically so that your room number will not clash with the other contest rooms, okay? Just to prevent yourself from overlapping. We also have to set up meeting password so that we can do an additional filter for those of, uh, those of us who are not a contestant or judge or even Zoom facilitators because we want to limit the number to within that area itself, the contestant itself. And we have to enable join before host so that the contestants can 
at least test out the microphones, test out the videos before the Zoom host enters. Otherwise, they'll be shut out from the room until the Zoom host enters. So it's very important to really take up that this button over here. This one is really important though, enable to join before host. So this button actually makes a very big difference in terms of uh, whether the contestant can come into the room earlier. If you have any questions, please remember to type in the chat box. Uh, and then after which, uh, obviously, I'll ask someone to read out the questions and I'll try to answer it very thoroughly. And then we have to mute uh, participants when they enter so that we maintain uh, the focus of people unmuting themselves when they enter so, so that they, they actually can have a very clear clarity test. So if they actually want to test out that mic, they would make sure that the others would not be disturbing them so that they can unmute and test off their mic before they mute, back, mute themselves back. We also have the enable waiting room so that for the Zoom master, you will filter out those people who are not related to the contest. If they have signed the names, such as, for example, they have signed it as a contestant, et cetera, name. Obviously, you will have this data from the contest share. The contest share is your key support for Zoom Master. You have to have all the details of the contestants before you will actually go for this contest itself. And making sure that you also have to do as breakout rooms pre-assigned. This button is also important because if you do not do the breakout rooms pre-assigned, then doing it on that spot will be tough for you as a Zoom Master. So I'll move on to the next page. Now, Zoom Master functions, after you do all this, this is only just the beginning. So for Zoom Master, there's actually loads of things beforehand. Now, for Zoom Master, when you enter it, uh, these steps are kind of repeated alongside with the uh, other contest facilitators because these are the basic steps. The step one and step two are kind of the basic step. You enter the room and make sure that you do this following three little buttons. You have to click on the audio so that you'll be connected to the meeting. Otherwise, you will not hear anyone. Okay, literally anyone. You have to click on manage participants to see who are there. As a Zoom master, you have the responsibility to actually look at the participants, who are the contestants, who are the special judges, who are the contest facilitators, and you will know them by assigning them to the right room later on. And then also click on the chat in case someone forgets some technical issues and you are one of the people that would direct them by troubleshooting their problems. Such as, for example, remember the first question that I asked just now. What happens if you literally do not hear anyone? It means that you are not connected to the room. So you have to actually click on the bottom left-hand corner, click on the mute button, connect to audio, so that people can hear you. Otherwise, you will see people type in the chat box saying that I cannot hear anyone. Either your microphone has issues, or either they have not clicked that button. So it's important and essential for Zoom Master to do the double check. And remember to rename yourself, such as now I rename myself as Zoom Master, et cetera, Eric. Thanks. So why, and then after you click all those buttons, you will see this white box popping out, as I listed here. This is the, this is the Zoom chat. And this is actually the literally the, the Zoom attendees. Obviously, there are only two there. But you have to understand if there are like 20, then renaming, seeing the participants may prove to be a challenge for you. So this is only just a demonstration of how it becomes. And next, uh, for step number three uh, for Zoom Master is that you can rename yourself. Remember to rename yourself properly like Zoom Master Aaron or like Bella Counter, blah, 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 etc. So that people can identify you, not just the others, but also the Zoom master, because the Zoom master is the controller of assigning you in the right boxes. And you also have another functions because you are the Zoom host, you have to give that co-host function. Remember the presettings we have done, enable co-host, enable breakout room. So now you can have the co-host function to give to the relevant people, such as the timer, the ballot counter, the contest chair, the chief judge, etc. These are the important people that you give the call host to so that they can actually uh, kind of become your communication support throughout the whole session. And make sure that <clears throat> you also verify their identity. The only exception that you do not need to verify the identity is the judges. You do not need to care. 
Okay, that is actually they have a special code name for that. I will describe that later on. But for the identity part, you have to check them whether they are as they proclaim to be. If there is an errand that actually pops up and then it proved to be another different errand, that is your responsibility to remove that person off this room. Okay, because they're not even part of this whole contest. So the Zoom master actually do this buttons be, be behind the scenes. So you have to ask them to switch on the webcam, see and match the identity. Oh, this is whoever, whoever from which, which club, a representative for uh, which contest. Obviously, when you talk about the renaming part, there's a special sequence for renaming. As you can see here, I have uh, summarized a bit of how they rename. Uh, for long names like Zoom Master, I can type Z.Master. International contestant, by typing in INT and then contestant in the back, it means international contestant. It helps the Zoom Master to actually know which contest you're representing on. Because there will be potential situation whereby some people attend earlier than their contest slots. So by renaming themselves, the con Zoom master will be able to know and identify who they are. I mean, like who they represent, which contest, so that they will assign them at the right time when the contest will begin. So they will actually allow them to join the contest room when the contest begins. And now you can see that now the Zoom holds itself uh, is, uh, as a Zoom master, we see that this is creating a breakout room. Literally, let me remove this part to the left side so it's better. So as a Zoom master, you actually create a breakout room. So uh, as I mentioned, they really create four breakout rooms. Why do I say four? Later you will actually know. And also about manually. You do not do it automatically because it will randomly slot up people. So you do it manually and then create breakout rooms. So what are the four rooms, you may ask? The four rooms will be the contest room, the judges room, the contest waiting room, and a secret room. Okay, I'll explain a bit of what they represent. The contest room is whereby the contestant compete, simple as that. The judges room are for the judges to dis discuss on potentially any protest, eligibility issues, or even giving the ballots to the ballot counters, okay? And then there's a contest waiting room for the table topics and the evaluation contest whereby this waiting room will be for them to stay there until that turn is called. And then there is a secret room. Why is there a secret room? I actually tested it out with Mercy last time, and this secret room served to do for a test speaker. You do not want the other people to know who the test speaker is, so you drag that test speaker into that secret room to verify the identity. That's the purpose of that secret room. So the secret room is for VIPs like test speaker, etc. So you will actually all that also serve as an emergency room uh, for any un, unforeseeable circumstances such as the contest room fails to operate. That will be situation like that. That's why I have to create a secret room as a backup room for that situation. Obviously you have to also the main room. The main room is whereby the main room is actually meant for people who are joining in early early or people who are disconnected. That will be the first room that they enter. And the Zoom master will allocate them representatively to the right room. And this is what happens if you have 50 people in this room. So the, the contest Zoom master will be actually doing the take, 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 take at the right person at the right room. So imagine that I have to do a lot of things behind the scenes and you, definitely have to take some time and I would appreciate if the contest chair would give some time and some leeway for the Zoom master to do all this ticking. If you have 100 people, congratulations, you have lots of things to take. But if you only have like 20 to 30, that is still manageable. Now, we also have to confirm whether they receive this notification when we actually open that room, like assigning them to a random room. We have to confirm whether they have received the notification that they are assigned to join a room. If they say yes, congratulations, you're fine. If they say no, then, then you have to actually do something additional, you know, such as telling them, please look at where the breakout room button is and telling them to click on it and then join the assigned room that we have requested them to do so. 
So this is only for the uh, laptop version, as I pointed here. This is for the mobile version. So these are the two uh, situations for mobile users and laptop versions to take note of. Because there is a slight difference between the mobile and uh, laptop version. The mobile version, the difference is that you only can see four people at the same time. And there are limited functionalities too. Uh, but it provides a good uh, coverage of nice cameras and beautifying functions compared to a laptop. A laptop may require an external webcam uh, that may help them to improve their odds, but it depends. That's not really related to today's training. Now, step eight, it will be chunky because step eight is actually a summary, a checklist for the Zoom master to do so. So the judges, as is listed, it will be actually required for the judges to be doing a briefing in a different room, not the room that you're in, or even any of the breakout rooms. They already done that briefing beforehand, before they enter this room. That's why they have code names. And also they have the contest. When they have contest, they'll be in the contest room, ballots, judges room, results, contest room, because they're announcing the result. Contestant wise, the briefing is in the waiting room, the contest waiting room, the contest, contest room, Etc. as it listed here. So this is the checklist for Zoom Masters to do so. So there are lots of prep works that the Zoom Master has to communicate with the, Zoom, the contest chair, get all those information, and then after which they will assign accordingly. So you'll be wondering, now how am I going to assign the judges when they have code names? Now the judges will be renamed them, themselves as J something. So the J something meaning that they will be allocated to the judges room. Obviously there are special circumstances like, uh, some 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 contests may actually may actually con uh, consider as J1 to J8 with a special name allocated to it, or J with initials. It depends on their choice. It's not up to my choice. But the best practice is that sometimes it's the numbering system that may work better than giving initials because we might figure who they are. Now the Zoom Master also have additional functions I mentioned earlier on. Uh, not not I mentioned, but. Uh, some of our previous speakers actually mentioned is that we have to have the mute all button. The mute all button allows you to control the whole meetings flow so that there will be no disruptiveness. You will actually just hear the contestant and the contest chair introducing them. Now, I also put the rate part saying that when you actually mute all, you have to also unmute as a form of courtesy because you mute all, including the contest MC and also the contestant. So you have to make sure that who you know the sequence of who the contestant come out like first, second, third, fourth, you need to know who uh, the lineup is and then I'll mute them accordingly. Now I put the letter A on this chart because there are potentially people who cannot, who might be disruptive or rousing. Uh, they may actually unmute themselves when they are not told to do so. So for disruptive participants to make sure everything is under your control, you can untick this box here over here. But this is a risky move though. You have to actually do rehearsals for this. You, uh, you can click un, uh, untick this box and then manually unmute the contestant and contest MC accordingly. Because when you untick this box, it means that they cannot unmute themselves anymore. So even if they want to click unmute, they will be shut off. So it's your control that you can unmute them on your own. The host and the co-host can do so. That's why we delegated the co-host as other contest facilitators that will support you along the way. I noticed there are 11 notifications in my chat box, but I will answer it later on. So now um, one more thing is that we have to note uh, for any uh, a contest a Zoom master is that you have to support those disconnected individuals. People who are disconnected will not join back this room or the contest room. So the Zoom master will have to check out the contestant uh, who are disconnected, will go back to the main room and talk to them, assign them at the right timing, uh, then move them back into the contest room to resume their contest. Uh, if you're unsure about what happens in this procedure, we actually allow the MC, the contest MC will announce the contact details of the contest chair and the chief judge. Like for example, their numbers or the WhatsApp uh, or the WeChat ID, etc., so that you can communicate with them effectively to prevent any 
um, potential disqualification or even like got knocked out because of technical issues. So please refer to the contest rule book. The contest rule book has been sent to everyone uh, by Bon Lee, our program quality director. Now step 11 is that, as Lewis mentioned earlier on, uh, the contestants, you just need to enjoy the flow. You do not need to, to worry too much, but the contest must, the Zoom master, has to remind them not to click the leave the breakout room button unless that contest has finished. Okay, leaving the contest room will actually put them back in the main room, and the con the zoom master will have to shift them back because they may make this mistake. So we have to tell them to avoid clicking these two buttons and just follow the instructions on the screen. That's all that is matters for a zoom master. Now zoom master will be tedious because there are lots of things behind the scene. What happens if you're disconnected? The disconnection notify the contest chair immediately and one of the co-hosts as a backup will be a host. That's why we allocate a co-host. They will take over your job. So the co-host will support you a bit uh, while you are disconnected and trying to resume a connection. So that will be actually solved for any Zoom master. Now for time and functionalities, I have to catch up on the time because uh, I hope that I'm still within the time. I don't have the timer with me though. The timer function is as follows. The timer responsibility is to keep track of the time and making sure that you give the right accurate timings to the chief judge. Okay. And that will affect the eligibility of the uh, contestants because the time matters. One second over time, disqualification uh, for that situation. So step one is the same, enter the room, click on these circle buttons, et cetera. Now, step three will be setting up virtual backgrounds. Now, setting up virtual backgrounds is kind of okay. Uh, every one of you in this room right now should have a virtual background button by following this screen over here. You can actually click on the arrow button beside your video, and then you can click on choose virtual background. If you do not have this function, usually it means that your Zoom is not updated to the up most updated version but you should have this virtual background because I've enabled this button there. Unless our Zoom master, did, our Zoom host originally didn't set up the virtual background. That depends on them. But usually the Zoom master will set up the virtual background just in case for the timer to actually do accurate timings. Uh, this is our gym over here. And uh, we can see some people actually testing out the Zoom virtual background already, but some of them may fail because you need to have a proper background for a Zoom uh, virtual background. You need to have a white, a blue, or a green screen. That's why it's called a green screen for virtual background. So for virtual background, you need to have the green, yellow, and red color cards downloaded and added to there. Your next uh, next function is making sure that download the cards correctly. Okay, Don't download golden color because it may be distracting that time. Or if step three, step four fails, then you will have a virtual actual tool like raising up the green, yellow, and red, making sure that it's visible on the screen because the contestant will look at your timing cards. So make sure that that will be fine for that. And your webcam has to be on most of the time uh, because they will be looking at you and you are, whatever you're doing, you will be the main focus for most of the contestants. So the timer, do not switch off your webcam. And next, prepare your timer sheet. Download it from Toastmaster International. Uh, if you don't have it, at least that will help you to tally the times and report it to the chief judge accordingly. Now, this is the timing rules for cont uh, contest uh, timers. Uh, for those of you who are seasoned timers, you should know the, the timings by now. But for new uh, participants who are new as a timer, new timer to a contest, this is the timing rules for the whole list for everyone as a reference. Now what happens if the timer disconnected? In most of the contests uh, in area division, there has to be two timers instead of one. Please check back the rubric. Two timers will be there because the other timer will be your standby backup. If your timer actually disconnects, then your other timer will have to take up the lead immediately without disruption, okay? So the timer is a very important role, making sure that you're on a standby, always support it. So for all area division contests, please find another timer, tell them to be prepared in case the first timer disconnects. 
This is just a precautionary measure that will be fair for the contestants. Now, ballot counters. Now, ballot counters are kind of pretty straightforward uh, because they only have one role. That is to collect the ballots, give the right results to the chief judge, full stop. You need to give it, you don't need to care about the timings, you just need to collect the ballots from the judges. So you enter the room, click on the three buttons again, which is the standard protocol, and then prepare your ballot counting form. Now, that ballot counting form can be downloaded from the Telstra International as usual. Now, step four is that once they have finished, you will be moved by Zoom Master to the judge's room. The judges will either private message you, WhatsApp you, or WeChat you, depending on where you are. If you're in China, WeChat might be a better option. If you're in Hong Kong, Macau, WhatsApp, or private message will actually solve that problem. When I say private message, meaning that private message within that judge's room, that is actually giving you an additional option to collect those ballots in case they are not reaching you through the other means. So this room serves to for you to collect the ballots from the judges. So you can tell it, remember the piece of paper that you had, that will actually help you to tell it the results. Now give the results to the chief judge after you have done the results, uh, counting, etc. Give the results to the chief judge so that the chief judge will know what to do next. Now repeat the process for all the contests. Now what happens if you're disconnected? Two better counters. You have another, buzz, uh, another buddy that will support you. So you do not need to worry too much. Remember for all contest shares, all area directors, division directors, please find two ballot counters at the very least that will actually support you. Do not rely on just one because it's a virtual uh, online contest. There will be disconnections. Even the best Wi-Fi in the world will have disconnection if you do not operate properly. Or maybe there is some signal failures or electrical shutdowns. SAAs. Now for SA, same rules. Step one, enter the room. Step two, still clicking the three buttons to make sure you're connected. And step three is slightly different because SA, there are two SAs. One will be in the main room to entertain and handle people who are coming in early for the contestants and also for people who are disconnected. So you will guide them. So Lewis actually mentioned about the taking care of them properly. This is what happens for the SA who are in the main room. There's another one that is in the contest room, which will look at you to make sure that you don't cheat. So that is called the SAA contest. They will actually put in the contestant waiting room. They will actually supervise a five minutes uh, time slot and then actually looking at you, requesting everyone to switch on the webcams. Now the question is, what happens if someone actually do not open the webcams? You have the discretion to report this to the contest chair and the chief judge and let them decide. So you have that discretionary power for a contest uh, SAA because they are looking at whether they are cheating or not. They, they have to report uh, to, the, to the contest chair, chief judge, to let them decide what is the next action to take. They may not get disqualified, but they may be actually deducting the amounts. It depends on how they do. But there's nothing specified uh, into what happens if they do not switch on the webcam during the, uh, the, uh, the contest waiting time. So uh, uh, unless I'm uh, mistaken, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong uh, uh, by Molly later on. Now, step four is during this contest room for the SA contestant, you see that in this picture over here, everyone is switching on the webcam. So this is an important protocol for everyone to actually switch on the webcam. This is whereby you can see them. Uh, this is actually not a qualified part because they actually do not see the upper body. So you need to at least see half the body. Like if I'm very fat, you can see that I have a very round body, at least that will be upper part of your body. So we request or recommend the people to stand up instead of sitting down. Because if you're sitting down, you have to move your camera very far away so that they will see at least upper part of your body. That's according to the contest rule. Now for, you have to ask them to switch on webcam and hands must be visible. If you're moving a bit further, your hands are kind of visible anyway. And they're sitting away from the laptop so that if they have the web, WhatsApp or WeChat, at least they are not touching the keyboard or communicating with any, anyone else. So that is actually a precautionary measure for to protect or preserve integrity in Toastmaster contest. Now, chief judge and judges, 
The chief judge and judges will focus on the first step, which is quite different from everyone else. You will sign in a different Zoom room so you can decide. The chief judge will decide on which room you want to create. You can create a random room. You can create using a free Zoom account. It's still fine. Okay, there's no requirement for that because you are not going to stay there for 40 minutes. A Zoom free account allows you to have 40 minutes access time. So you can create a Zoom different room and then pre-assigned um, code names or even like uh, your arrangements. How would the judges rename themselves? This is a discretionary power, power by the chief judge. Now enter the room in that in that artificial room that you the chief judge actually decides. Same uh, same protocol and then you'll be given a a code name, etc. It depends on how the judges want to do. So final decision is up to them, not up to the Zoom master. Okay. And after which, go to the real contest room for the judges and the chief judge. You already entered with your preset name, meaning that if you have preset yourself as J A L, then you have to enter the room as J A L. If you're re entering it with a different name, we will not accept you because there's a waiting room that bars you from it. Never open your video anytime, okay? Because your identity is confidential for judges. So also prepare your judges form, which can be downloaded from the TI or ask your chief judge for it. When the contest finished, you will be moved to a, chief, a judges room. You can either private message your ballot counter results, or you can actually take a picture of your contest form and then send it to your chief judge, okay? That's only applicable for judges, etc. Now, the tie-breaking judge will also do the same thing, but they have more things to fill up because the tie-breaking judge has to fill up all the contestant names, etc. And making sure that if you're using the official uh, contest ballot form, you have to sign, otherwise it will be void. Okay? Just a slight reminder for the judges. Step number nine, wait till the chief judge signal you to return to that room, okay? before uh, anything happens. And after which, please notice that all the protests will be handled in that contest uh, in the judges' room. The protest will be handled there. What are the two potential protests that you will see? Either eligibility or originality. These are the two challenges points. Obviously, you can protest on other things such as like, uh, there's a technical issue by the contestant. The contestant said, I got a technical issue. Uh, there is a time, I cannot see a timer. I, I got disconnected. What will it be done? So the chief judge has to refer to the contest exception rule book, also the contest rule book for further instructions. Contest MC, uh, as Doris has mentioned earlier on, step one, enter the room. Step two, same thing, which is clicking the buttons. And then three, you have the responsibility as a contest MC to tell them to rename themselves. Rename themselves very properly on that part. Let me just check whether I'm, I'm worried about overtime actually. <laughs> okay, I see a lot of questions there. <laughs> Asking everyone to rename themselves, timer, etc. Provide the contest chair and chief judge telephone number and contact details. Okay, because this is very important if the contestant disconnected, they have to find them directly. Okay, because they are saying, oh, sorry, I got disconnected. I, I'm trying to connect back, okay? Uh, at least let them know about it. And then contest step four, MC contest room itself, read the script because Doris actually make a script. You can actually refer that template later on. Uh, remind the speakers to pin the timer. Okay, pinning the timer is actually the responsibility of the contestants. Make sure the contest, MC, contest chair brief these rules clearly in the contestant briefing because the timers are kind of hard to find when you have lots of participants. So the, the speakers have to learn how to click and pin the timers. These are the two options. For mobile versions, find a person by swapping to the left. I will show you how it be done. And also laptop version, pin the timer by clicking on the three dots. Where do you find them, you may ask. Let me see where it is though. It's somewhere later on, I think it's uh, sexually located later on. So for step number five is actually about introducing the contestants uh, on the type of contest, interviewing the contestants while waiting for the chief judge to, to come back with the results. Keep them occupied though. Uh, and then after which when the chief judge is back, pass the stage back to the chief judge to announce the results. 
contest chair. Contest chair is kind of the call rule other than the Zoom master. You have to communicate with the Zoom master early. When I say early, at least two days, I hope, because they actually have to maybe doing a rundown, a trial before that. Uh, and when um, judges name to judges, uh, the chief judge early as well, uh, because the contest chair has to kind of have to maintain a communication between the chief judge and themselves. And also draw lots, as I mentioned, uh, as Doris mentioned earlier on, she has actually tried the Wheel of Fortune, which is a random wheel spinning to choose the sequence of the ballots, uh, but, uh, the contestants. But for me, I would do it slightly different. I would do it like a randomizer. So I actually find a name, list out all the contestants, and randomly generate for five times, just for fairness. And then after which, at the fifth time, I'll list out the contestants um, openly by sharing the screen so that they will know who the sequence will be. So that they will know whether they are the first speaker or the last speaker. So contestant, do not worry too much. Uh, you'll be safe hands with our, our automatic votes of finding who the contestant, which contestant will come first. Now, troubleshootings. Uh, this will be the last part of it before I answer any questions. Uh, kind of rushing quite a lot of stuff though, but uh, I try to compact it within four or five. So troubleshoot. Uh, troubleshooting, this is the disconnection page. So what happens if you're disconnected for all contest facilitators? This is your guideline. So uh, if you are disconnected, the first per people that you have to contact, uh, contact will be the contest chair and the chief judge. What happens if the Zoom master disconnects, the backup co-host will be the host. The timer, backup timer will replace it. Contest MC, unfortunately, we have to wait for you to come back or the contest chair will step in to resume that contest, uh, read them. It depends on how the coordination works. Ballot counter, the chief judge will step in to actually count the, count the ballots just as a substitute. The SAA, uh, for the SAA to disconnect, the contest chair will step into the vacant role. Like if the, if the Zoom uh, main room is actually, the SAA actually disconnected, then contest chair will move to that uh, main room to actually facilitate things. Judges, the remaining judges will be your best bet. So always find additional judges in an online contest because you do not know when they disconnected and it will be unfair uh, for the contestant if the judges disconnected and then make the results and assumptions based on what they have heard for the first two minutes before they disconnected, etc. So these are the common problems that you will face as a contest. For all the contest facilitators, this is a must know uh, it will solve most 95% of the issues that will come up in the contest. So first of all, when you do not hear any sounds, check whether they're connected or not. Because usually they will actually type in, uh, I cannot hear anyone, I cannot hear any sounds. So as I mentioned earlier on, tell them to click on the bottom left hand corner, click on the mute button, unmute themselves, and then connect to the audio. This is the most basic uh, um, troubleshooting method. And it solved like 95% of the sound issues believe it or not, because they forgot to click that button. Now, what happens if the contestant cannot see the timer? So as I mentioned earlier on, the swap button now is actually show it. So in the mobile version, you just need to swap left. It's just like Tinder or other softwares that you actually can swap it and you can find a timer and then double tap that timer with your finger, type that screen of the timer and it will be your main screen. That will be for yourself to pin the video. For laptop, find the timer and then pin the video uh, uh, because there will be three dots for that. So this is what happens when uh, the other one, another other common issue that will be uh, met is that the contestant will not see the breakout room. Uh, that's a possibility whereby the contestant cannot see the breakout room. So they may actually click the wrong button. So this is what happens on the left hand side is the mobile version uh, that you will see. Tell them to click on that that four little squares, that is the breakout room, and they can join it directly because the Zoom master assigned them to join it. And the laptop version tell them to click on the bottom most right button that has a four square, that is also the breakout room. You only see that breakout room when you assign a room, okay? So currently most of us who are not a co-host, or actually not even a co-host can see it, most of you will not be able to see it except me right now. So I'll assign you guys later on so that you can actually see it. And finally, if their audio and webcam is not working, we have to do reminders, tell them to do rehearsals beforehand. And 
audio-wise, tell them you use a headset or check the sound system. At the very least, that will keep everything in check. Video-wise, check video buttons and settings. And finally, um, how do we actually check it is to tell them to click on this arrow button over here. And then it will pop up the audio and the video buttons for you to actually correct it. That is useful for the contestants. Tell them to do the check. Uh, we, uh, I'm actually creating a video with um, one of our district PR team. Uh, that video will be very helpful for the contestant as well. So that will be for, for the contestant kit. But today for, for here is mainly for the contest facilitators. Last resort, uh, if anything that's not working, use your phone. Uh, that is my best honest tip. Uh, the phone wise actually has much more secure uh, situation. Your laptop, if it's failing on the Wi-Fi, your mobile network might be your best bet. Or if it still doesn't work, then use some portable mobile hotspot that will actually connect to your laptop if it's your main contest kit. Finally, the Q&A session. Thank you everyone for your patience to listen to this very intensive. Uh, thanks, Wilson. I, I couldn't see the timer <laughs> because I was focused on it. Um, yes, so thank you very much for your time. Now I'm actually looking at the questions or if anyone wants to raise a question, please unmute yourself and then I will allow people to answer the questions, uh, ask the questions right now. Anyone wants to ask the questions? You can. Uh, Mercy? Yes. Uh, I saw you raising up your hand. Are you having a question? Um, no, I don't know. Maybe it's from before. Sorry. Okay, okay. But no thanks for the session. It's good. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions so far? I think I've done a, quite a thorough um, breakdown for that. Oh, I'm so sorry. I went so over time. So the MC has a backup chair or a co-host. Uh, a nice question. Usually all the contest facilitators, including the MCs, are co-hosts. So do not worry. The con Zoom master will assign you as a co-host. Now, MC-wise, uh, as a contest chair, uh, you can assign a contest MC for a contest. You do not need to be the one who is speaking for the contest. You can assign someone to help you. So that's why there is a contest MC role there. I hope that answers your question. Same question. Oh, Aaron's PPT. Okay, uh, I'll send it out later on. I've refined a bit just to match previous ones. Okay, so uh, for the material that uh, Aaron's presenting, the PPT, including today's video, and uh, we have, as mentioned, we have actually two more video. One is when we have the contestants briefing, the, tra the training, contestant training, we have a video, and when we have, uh, on the day of the contest, on the area on contest, we also have a video. So all together, three video, we including, uh, uh, Aaron's PPT will be shared by you after this, um, after after today's training. Give me a few days because uh, all the video has to be uploaded in YouTube and also WeChat. Uh, right, so give me a few days; it will be made available to you. Um, uh, how much time do I have? I know I'm kind of over time. Uh, we have at most five minutes. Okay, so I'm actually doing a stimulation so that you actually can see out the breakout room. Uh, because the best practice is that you understand how the contestant works, okay? So okay. now currently I've assigned manually, okay? According to your room so that you'll be assigned to different rooms right now. So you should see a power button telling you that to go to the different rooms. This is exactly what happens for contestants. So you can join that room directly. So feel free to bounce in. It takes me quite some time. <laughs> everyone should be assigned to everyone. Uh, uh, Hello, everyone. Uh, now you guys are imaginary into a actual stimulation room. So you are in this room. You see that breakout room button there, right? So all of you actually see all this breakout rooms. So breakout rooms are essential for you to know as a contest facilitator 
to let them know, oh, um, uh, click on the breakout room so they will be assigned there directly. Uh, this will be for buttons and remain, remember to rename yourself. Uh, we have to do the reminders for that. So as a Zoom master, I can bounce into any rooms that I want. Co-host, same thing. So they can actually bounce into different rooms so that we can provide a supportive network. I'll just bounce, bounce on to different rooms. You guys can have a chat. I'll broadcast some messages as well. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this stimulation room. Uh, this is the room whereby imaginary that you are a contestant, you actually experience this. And not just that, you also feel that um, there is also a breakout room button telling the instructions. You just need to follow it directly and you'll be instructed to uh, just by the click of a button. You do not need to move too much, though. Any questions so far? No one that moved to another room, though. We have a test speaker and then and the name. So Hello. maybe, yeah. Hello, hi. Hello. Yeah. So someone just asked Hello. for help. <laughs> <laughs> Who okay, so, <laughs> so asking for help is also one of the functions whereby the contestant would do. They can ask for help and then telling the Zoom master, oh, what happens? Can I solve your problem? So the Zoom master will actually come by and support. Mm. Mm, Modi, I have got one question. I'm mm. just wondering, can we borrow the, when we need to hold the country version? So I'm just wondering, can we borrow it for? Hello, everyone. Anyone here? I'll start by uh, hosting. Uh, you can unmute yourself, though. Seems that uh, as a co-host, we do not, we can't see what's going on in the breakout room. Uh, uh, but you're not there. Uh, Billy, yes. What was the question? Uh, no, I just saying hi. Hi. So make sure that I'm in the, I'm, I'm in the right room. Yeah, in the right room. So we randomly just allocate so to let you see the breakout room buttons and you experience how the contestant works. Oh, okay. So this is actually like, imagine that this is a waiting room. So they the table topic contestant and the evaluation contestant will be waiting in this room. I will be as an SAA to look at everyone by telling everyone, please switch on your webcam uh, so that I can see what you're doing. Uh, so these are the common practice that we have to do. Okay. 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 Thank you. Hello, Herman. Unmute yourself. Uh, I have unmute already. So uh, any questions so far? I explained very thoroughly, right? I hope. I hope. I feel so exhausted. <laughs> okay, so I'll actually ask everyone to pretend return the main room. Um, to whoever is still here, uh, I'll be actually asking everyone. Everyone. So everyone within 60 seconds will be back into this room. Now this is called the closed room buttons uh, that uh, you be usually used to call to let everyone back. Do you guys see any pop-up buttons just now? Do you see a broadcast message just now? Uh, can you re uh, can you say what it is on the broadcast message? Uh, unmute yourself, Fred. I mute yourself. I mute yourself. Um, the message said, like, uh, you will be returned to the main room and this will be done in 50, 59 seconds and it's start to count down. Yeah. And so there this is, is an option for you to leave now. So yeah. I click that and then that just sent me back to the main room right away. Mm. So, how, how is the experience, Winnie? Do you, do you feel that you understand a bit of how the contestant works? That will help you as well. I think totally helpful to have an experience myself. Uh, my suggestion will be like really having enough co-hosts to be the in charge of the breakout room because mm. when everyone is in a breakout room, that means that overall master Zoom controller is not in the individual room, if I'm not mistaken. 
Like, so it'll be I, bouncing into different rooms. The yeah, it'll be bouncing rooms. around. So I guess it would be great that before the contest start, like everyone got assigned that this Zoom co-host got assigned that, hey, you will be in charge of this like judge room. You'll be in charge of the pet room. You know, that would be helpful. Yeah, so the contest essay will be put in charge of the contest waiting room. The con uh the essay who is in charge of the main room, like this one is the main room, that person will be in charge of looking after this room. So every room has someone in charge there. Yes. My question as I posed earlier in the chat is that like I don't really entirely get the necessity of after the contest, the Zoom master has to click every single judge and send him to the judge room so that they can finalize the result and then they, you have to send them back to the main room my feedback is that like i guess most of us probably just take a photo or just type out the first three uh winners to the battle counter maybe by whatsapp because it's actually easier than typing in the chat room here which may also be a bit of problem because sometimes the recipients it change itself right so i think whatsapp will be easier for us say in hong kong or in china wechat would be easier then basically it's done like when it's come to protests it's none of the business of the voting judge they can voice them out to the judge themselves but not necessarily inside the judge room oh okay so oh. no it's a good point that you mentioned because there are different uh, areas and divisions you can have the rights to actually do the whatsapp room uh look at the emily's uh, chart just now that's actually creating whatsapp groups so basically it actually answers a bit of your question uh now the point of having the judges room for the protest is that yes you can discuss with it uh, but remember that if it's challenging on the originality for the contestants then the contestant have the right to defend themselves so they will be asked to join that judges room to defend themselves properly and the judges making that decision on their own obviously they can discuss within themselves but at least the contestant will be shift to the judges room to say whatever they have to defend themselves uh, how they prepare their speech etc uh, this is just, just only a precautionary or an alternative option uh, for the all right for the operations yeah. okay now before we move on to further questions now it's 11 30 so aaron can i confirm the meeting is actually done and complete yes uh, the the training has been done so thank you very much for your patience okay so so guys uh let's first of all i'd like to thank you for everybody for, for everybody's time and uh uh it's now 11 30 so if you really want if you want to go please feel free to do so but then you say oh you may have a few more questions then you may want to stay more for, for another five to ten minutes than aaron and myself and and emily lewis is and of course stories would be happy to take any questions how about this so if you want to leave please feel free to do so. So five more minutes, okay? So thank we you, are going to end. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Iris, thank you, Billy, thank you.